Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are and what time it is in that part of the world. I want to start my video blog by introducing myself and also introducing why I am making these video blogs and um, the whole purpose of this video blog series. Um, I am Chaudhary Abdullah Qasid and I consider myself a life, business and career advisor. That's why I also have a page on Facebook that gives my name and says that I'm an LBC advisor. Um, the reason that I consider myself to be a live business and career advisor is because I um, have been working for about 23 years, mostly in the field of human resources and in organizational development. So I've been working a lot with people and I have been involved in consulting and also with training. I've also done a lot of work in the media sector where I've actually facilitated discussions of thousands of people, uh, large talk shows, more than 150 of them, where there were like large groups of participants. So um, my experience has always been with people, talking to people, facilitating um, focus group discussions. So um, I have tried to combine all these experiences, my realizations and thoughts that I've gained from all of these experiences in um, disseminating my thoughts and my ideas and my opinions um, through this video blog series. And I've called this video blog series um, Let's Talk About because what I want to do is to uh, stimulate conversation on different subjects and different topics. And what I want is for people to not only listen to the video blog, but also to give their thoughts and opinions in comment section and for people to have a discussion on the subject. Um, the reason why I am having this video blog uh, in English is because I think that um, a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about, it does not just apply to people only within Bangladesh, but uh, it can actually be helpful for people living in other parts of the world. And as English is a language for global communication, that's why I thought it would be a good idea to communicate in English. Um, I uh, also have another version of the same blog in which I speak in Bangla combined with a little bit of English, which is the way that we generally talk in Bangladesh. And that is meant for the audience of Bangladesh. And this, of, of course, is also meant for the audience of Bangladesh, but this is also intended for people who are living in other countries and who may just accidentally stumble upon the video and watch it and may find something useful in it. So um, <clears throat> the topic that I want to talk about today is how to survive long extended periods of misfortune in one's life and how to um, combat uh, the stress that arises in one's life from things like career setback, retrenchment and redundancy. Uh, these are all global problems. These are all very uh, common problems which plague people all over the world. And uh, my experience has not just been within Bangladesh. I've worked in other places as well. I have uh, it, quite a bit of international exposure. So that is the reason that I feel that I can give my thoughts and comments and opinions uh, from more of a global perspective and not just limit my thoughts to Bangladesh. Uh, let me give a little bit of introduction about myself because I can't expect that you have watched my previous programs and you know who I am uh, in case it's the first video blog of mine that you're watching. So I've already given my name. I've worked for about 23 years now, uh, mostly in the HR and organizational development field. And I've worked in many different sectors, uh, mostly in the ready-made garments export sector. Currently, I'm the CHRO in a large group of companies uh, with about 15,000 people, almost 16,000 people, actually. Um, prior to that, I was working in another large garments company where there were about 25,000 people. I was the director of human resources, administration, compliance, and welfare over there. Um, I was also working in a large textile company where there were about 30,000 employees. Um, I was working in a large food and beverage and uh, bakery products company um, where I was the uh, director of uh, strategic business development and human resources. I uh, also had the good opportunity of working for a company that was in the telecommunication, infrastructure, and equipment supply sector. 
and I was over there also as uh, head of human resources, uh, head of human resources development, and I was also managing the business division, one of the business divisions, um, and also uh, communication, um, the corporate communication wing of that company. Um, I also worked in one of the largest uh, local banks and also in one of the largest global international uh, banks as well. And I worked in an international shipping company as well, which was one of the largest shipping companies of Singapore way back in the late 90s. And um, other than that, I've had the good fortune of representing my country in three world universities debating championships, and I've also been a world public speaking semi-finalist. So I've had quite a bit of um, variety of experiences. I've had a lot of media experience. I've had um, the experience of conceptualizing, hosting and facilitating discussions, about 150 episodes of uh, two programs, Agami Contra, Agami Bhavna, on two very large TV channels, Gazi TV and Bangla Vision. And I've also done quite a few programs on Channel I, and on the online platform, I've uh, hosted a program called Survivor Diaries. And I'm also um, currently doing this video blog series as well. Um, I don't at any point want to say that I have uh, had a life full of successes and that's why you should listen to me. On the contrary, um, I think that there are a lot of places in my life in which I've experienced a lot of setbacks and I've experienced a lot of failures. And I think it's because of those failures, because of the setbacks, combined with alhamdulillah, a moderate level of success that I've had that actually endows me with enough experience, knowledge and empathy um, with which I can share a lot of thoughts and information uh, with a lot of people, with my audience. And that's why I think it would be useful for someone to listen to what I have to say on the various subjects. And of course, then we can all learn from each other and exchange thoughts and opinions. Um, given all the introduction and my purpose, uh, now I can actually get into the subject. Um, <clears throat> regarding continued periods of misfortune, uh, one of the things that we all need to understand is that there are a lot of things that happen in one's life which is absolutely beyond one's control. Um, there are a lot of people who come and speak to me. Um, they, they communicate to me over LinkedIn, over Facebook. And um, even through my personal network, and of course, like there are so many hundreds and thousands of people that I have interviewed in, uh, you know, while they came as candidates for um, jobs uh, in the companies that I work. So I, I've got to meet a lot of people. I've, I've, I've had the opportunity of uh, knowing the life stories of a lot of people, sometimes very sad and tragic life stories of a lot of people as well. And sometimes... Um, They've also communicated with me um, separately. And I've tried to actually help them by giving them some suggestions and advice. And sometimes I feel very happy that some, some of the advice that I've given has helped them to uh, rediscover uh, hope in their lives. And it's helped them to find a path and find a direction in their life. So... Um, I hope that my, uh, like I'm definitely not going to take anybody's name, but I want to share some of those stories also um, to help inspire people that, um, you know, how they actually survived and also maybe uh, what are the kind of advice uh, that I gave to them, which was helpful for them. So um, there was this person who once came to me and he was telling me about uh, his life. Um, not too long ago, quite recently, a couple of months ago, he was actually sharing with me that uh, he studied in the UK. He did his master's in a pretty well-known British university after having completed doing his bachelor's in a leading private university over here. And he's also had English medium education and he's quite smart, good communication skills. And he's worked in three, three or four good companies for about 10 years. And then all of a sudden, misfortune came and wrought absolute havoc in his life and the life of his whole family. His um, father was diagnosed with cancer and his father passed away. And after that, his uh, mother also started having acute kidney-related problems. And in order to take care of the medical costs of these two uh, kinds of illnesses, 
they needed to sell property they had in Dhaka, they needed to sell property they had in their country home and um, he was actually having to give a lot of time to the medical treatment and having to stay in the hospital, accompany his parents to um, go even outside the country for treatment. So because of all of this uh, erratic movement that he was having to go through, he could not continue in his job as well. Um, the last company that he was working for, they had to let him go because he was uh, not being able to give time to the job. So, um, and ever since then, like because of, uh, I mean, he needed to continue giving time to his um, parents. He was not able to look for a job properly. And then um, more than a year passed by that he was busy still doing all of that. And then COVID started. And after that, definitely no companies were hiring. And after the, I mean, the, the, the misery of COVID having passed away, even then, a lot of companies are still not willing to take him on because of the long service gap that he's had of almost three years. And um, he was actually telling me all of these things and he was on the brink of tears and he was saying that he's, he often feels suicidal. And, um, and he was really, uh, I mean, breaking down. And that's when I shared some thoughts and suggestions and advice with him and what, I want to share that over here as well. Um, first and foremost, I gave examples of a lot of people who've gone through even worse periods of uh, misfortune for longer periods of time, for longer stretches of time than he has. And I also cited examples of my own life where I've also had to go through extremely bad setbacks in my life and career for, uh, for a couple of years. And those were times when I also felt that um, I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel. And there were many times when I was also feeling extremely frustrated and I didn't know how I would be able to come out of that, uh, what felt like an abyss, that I felt like I'd just fallen deep, deep down into a pit and there was no way to climb out of it. And no matter how much hard I tried to climb, I was always sliding and slipping and falling back in. It was such a bad feeling. So I shared that feeling that I used to go through um, with him and I explained to him that a lot of people have even worse misfortunes and they last for even a longer period of time. So then naturally the question comes that, so how do you keep surviving? How do you make your way out of it? So my response to that was that most of the time people do eventually survive. That is a thought that you need to keep in your mind. That's what I told him and that's what I'm telling all my audience members as well. That when you're going through periods of extended bad luck, you need to know that 90%, um, 95% of the time, people who are going through extreme bad luck do come out of that phase of bad luck. 5 to 10% of the time, uh, you don't come out of the bad luck and the bad luck eventually consumes you. And that's basically the point where you get destroyed or, you know, your life comes to an end. So, but 90, 95% of the time, you are not at that point in time. So you need to keep your hopes high. You need to keep thinking that there is going to be a way out of it. And you need to keep on looking for ways out of the problem. Every attempt that you take which fails at something, it could be in trying to get a job, trying to launch a business, trying to, you know, get a loan, trying to do anything that you're attempting. And uh, no matter how many times you fail at it, the thing that you need to keep on doing is um, dissecting your steps and analyzing what you did and trying to figure out where the failure, I mean, why the failure happened and what it is that you can improve a little bit, what it is that you can tweak and adjust and do just a little bit better in order to improve your chances of success. Uh, one thing that you have to remember is that no matter how many times you attempt, uh, there is no guarantee that you are going to be successful. You need to have a completely endless source of uh, energy to inspire yourself to keep going. You need to keep telling yourself that it okay, it didn't work 10 times, um, it might on the 11th or the 12th or the 15th. I need to keep trying until I come to the point where it will suddenly work. Um, 
it's been seen that people who are throwing darts um, from a distance of 8 to 10 feet at the board who are pretty bad at aiming, um, even they, after every 20 or 30 throws, gets one in the bullseye. So um, that is the tenacity that you need to have. That is the faith that you need to have. And you need to keep throwing the darts. You need to keep going at it. You need to keep making slight differences in the way that you approach the problem. And you need to keep going strong, resiliently. You need to believe in yourself that you will be able to make it through to the other end. And you just cannot give up. And you need to find ways of surviving. You need to take help from people. Uh, that can be um, asking for favors. That can be um, getting someone to give you some sort of a special tip or helping you to get connected to someone else who could be of help to you. Or it could even be taking financial assistance. Now, I know that uh, culturally we are designed to dislike the whole idea of taking financial assistance and society generally frowns upon people who have to take financial assistance. But sometimes you have to take financial assistance because there is no other way but to. Uh, because like there could be banks breathing down your necks, there could be huge crisis and problems that you just have to find a way out of. And you cannot do something unethical or illegal or criminal. So the next best thing that you can do is to take financial assistance from people. Um, as long as you are going to return the borrowed money, as long as you, it may not always be possible to return the whole money at a time. You may have to uh, divide it up into installments. You may sometimes take a little longer than what you had intended, but you need to return the money and you need to have the intention to do that and you need to communicate with the people that you borrow from that you are returning the money and you are going to return the money and that you're in the process of returning the money in small parts and you need to explain the reason why the delays happen or why the delays may happen also further in the future and you need to maintain that communication and that relationship and you need to uh, basically be good to your word, to your commitment, as much as you can. But the fact is that, that sometimes you do need to take financial assistance as well in situations where there really is no other way out. Um, also, um, basically, uh, sometimes you may need to liquidate assets when you're in a crisis situation. Uh, sometimes you have to compare um, the extent of the crisis uh, and to the option of liquidating your asset. If the asset is something that has a lot of sentimental value and the problem is something that it will not require too much to solve that problem, then perhaps you need to hold on to the asset and borrow money in order to solve that crisis. Or if it is an asset which does not have that much of a sentimental value to you or it is something that you can replace later on, then you should not be holding on to it too tenaciously. You need to liquidate that asset and then you need to um, solve the financial crisis that you're having. Or um, sometimes you need to do both. Sometimes the crisis itself may be so big that you may need to liquidate your asset and at the same time you may also need to take financial assistance. So different situations will call for different kinds of solutions but you just have to be thinking out of the box and uh, you need to come, continue to come up with ways to tackle the problem and the situation. Um, the thing that I'm trying to emphasize on is that you need to be creative. You need to think of ways by which you can get around the challenge that you're facing, how you are going to keep surviving until you come to the end of the tunnel and light starts shining through, until you finally come to a place where bad luck runs out. Um, this is also a point where I would suggest for people to consult an astrologer, um, especially an astrologer who is a little bit positive-minded and optimistic and who would uh, refrain from giving you too much of bad news and rather try and give you hope and optimism and kind of give you an idea of when the bad times are going to pass away and when 
how soon you can be expecting good things to come your way. Um, not always will what the astrologer says come true. I personally have been consulting astrologers for many years now and I believe that even the very best of them are probably never more than 50% accurate. But um, it's still a good idea to consult an astrologer because it kind of gives you, you may not believe it, but uh, I mean, for someone who has been consulting astrologers for over a dozen years now and very minutely, I have seen that uh, whether you accept it or not, but a lot of the things in your life um, actually can be predicted. Um, at least 40 to 50 percent of incidents that happen in your life will be in line with astrological predictions. And at least 50 to 60 percent of your traits and your personality attributes can also be predicted through astrology. So um, it is not an entirely bad idea to consult a positive minded astrologer because you need to treat that information that comes in sort of like a weather forecast. Like for example, if you compare the bad time that you're having in your life with a period of extreme bad weather, then let's say you want to be traveling to a certain place but you're not being able to because of the continued bad weather, then the astrology, I mean the, the weather forecast is going to give you an idea that okay, this sort of bad rainy weather is going to continue for maybe another three or four more days after which you can expect a bit of moderate sunshine. So that at least gives you a little bit of hope. Now, they may say that that moderate sunshine is coming on the fourth day, but ultimately it may come on the sixth. But at least it kind of gives you an idea that there is something better up ahead. And sometimes astrology can also help you get prepared for a bumpy ride as well. Because if an astrologer can give you some sort of a guidance and give you a little bit of an idea that there could be a little bit of a bumpy phase in your life coming up, then in that time, you would also prefer to consolidate yourself and not maybe go out on a limb and attempt anything too adventurous. So um, you need to have a balanced um, equation with astrology and that can be helpful in navigating your way through a period of continued uh, misfortune. And one other thing that is very important is to uh, I mean, not one other thing, it is the most important thing, um, is to have that tenacity and that faith that this is not the end, this is not the last chapter. So if it is not the last chapter, then this bad phase is going to have a conclusion. I just have to somehow find a way of holding on to it, holding on to life until the storm blows over. Something like uh, people who've been seen to be holding on to a steel pipe uh, in a tornado and the whole house has been blown away, everything has been blown away, but that person has survived because that person managed to somehow grab hold of a steel pipe and has been holding on to it tenaciously um, for hours together during the entire extent of the tornado. So you need to compare yourself to be in a position like that and you just have to hold on. Just Clench your teeth, uh, clench your fists, and just hold on. You just can't give up. So that is the strong message that I want to pass on to anybody and everybody who's listening to me. Um, that you've just got to understand that um, it isn't over yet. And I'm not giving up until it is over. So that resilience you need to have. And... In addition to that resilience, what you need to understand is that you cannot think about, um, you cannot blame yourself if you're not uh, arriving at success. You cannot be analyzing into it too much. Only thing you can do is you just have to tell yourself, okay, it didn't work this time. These are the few places that I can improve and you just have to attempt again. So you cannot start feeling sad at why I'm not achieving success. The moment you start feeling sad, the moment you start blaming yourself or other people in your life or other circumstances, that is the time when you start burying yourself into your own grave. You cannot do that. You cannot analyze. You cannot think. You cannot blame 
all you just have to do is to surrender yourself to the power of fortune, destiny and luck. You need to think that this is luck just not favoring me for whatever the reason may be. And the only thing that I can do is to keep working harder, keep holding on, keep being determined and praying for luck to change and wait until it does. So that's the core message that I want to give. In addition to that, um, because naturally one of the major reasons why people go through bad times in life is when careers go upside down, when people lose their jobs and when they get made redundant or when they are sacked or retrenched. So um, that is something that, and that's happened so much over the last couple of years because of COVID and all. So this is something that I want to also share a couple of thoughts on because the two are very deeply related. Um, and this I'm going to do very quickly um, because I want to contain my video blog within half an hour. Um, one very important thing in life is that um, from the age of around 23, 24, which is from the time when people generally come out of university and start working, most people end up working till their early 60s or till the age of about 65, unless and until they get into a business or become self-employed. So most people have about like a 40-year uh, work span, 40 to 42 years. So some people a little more. Between 40 to 45 years of work, people mostly have. Now, in this 40 to 45 years of work life, um, if a person works for three to four years in an organization, then on an average, a person would be found to be working in between you know, 12 to 15 organizations in one's life. And some people, of course, they tend to work for longer periods of time or they are lucky and they do not need to change as much. So um, they end up spending maybe 10 years, 15 years in one organization and then five, seven years in some other and maybe another seven or eight in another. So they may have only three or four organizations in their life. So generally, it's anything between usually three or four to about 15 or so. Only few people would have like more than 15 organizations in their career, like maybe 20 or so. And there would be very few people who like spend their entire 40 years in just maximum one or two organizations. The vast majority of the people would have at least four to five job changes to maximum 15. The vast number of people would be between eight to 12. So let's say if 10 is like a pretty much average number that uh, is the number of organizations that a person works in throughout one's career and one's life. Um, on an average, if all the job changes that a person has had to have, um, uh, if there would be a survey of a million people, it would be found that about 40% of the time, you are having to change your job because you've run into some kind of a problem in your organization with your bosses, with your colleagues, with your team members, or, you know, people don't like you, or there's a problem, there's a conflict, there's politics, or um, like the company is letting you go because there is a, a economic downturn happening like what happened during COVID, or the company itself is being taken over by another company, or the company is going through a difficult period and that is why they cannot afford you or there could be you know any various you know one of many numerous reasons why the organization is letting you go and that would happen at least in three to four or five of the uh, job changes in your life and the remaining maybe five six seven eight job changes that will happen will be on your terms where you are quite happy where you are um, and then you want to explore and see what else you can do if there's any other company that is going to pay you a little more. And then you find something or someone just comes and, you know, sees how talented you are and they offer you and then you switch. So there would be uh, a combination of both kinds of experiences. So uh, whenever there is some sort of a setback, whenever there is a case of redundancy or retrenchment, you shouldn't take it too hard on yourself. I have actually counseled people who've wanted to commit suicide. I've counseled people who were completely mentally shattered and they could not go out and start looking for jobs because they didn't know how to explain uh, to people 
or even share with their family members that they're facing difficulties in their workplace or that there are problems uh, that are happening between themselves and their employers or with colleagues or with other team members in the company. Now, these are things that culturally we have put ourselves into a trap where we think that we cannot be talking about these kind of things or if such things are happening to someone, then it is that person's fault and it is something very humiliating for that person. But one just has to remember that, you know, a job, a career, uh, uh, an employment, it's just like any relationship. And all relationships, even relationships with parents, brothers and sisters, with spouse, with close friends, all kinds of relationships sometimes go sour. So, I mean, why would a professional relationship not go sour? Business partnerships break up. Collaborations between suppliers and, you know, um, you know, suppliers and people who are taking the supplies in, um, that suffers. So why will an employment agreement between two parties not suffer? It's it's very uh, commonplace thing to happen. So the way to mentally fight the pressure that is that comes onto someone when a person is faced with a situation like that is to distance oneself from that scenario and to explain to oneself that this is a very common thing and it happens all the time. And it's probably not the first time that it is happening. It may not be the last time also that it may be happening. Uh, in a 40-year career, it's going to happen at least three or four times. So, I mean, one cannot go and spiral off into a state of depression every time that it does happen. So, one has to take it in one stride and one needs to understand that even very famous people, very talented people who are managing big companies, who are holding positions such as the CEO and directors of various banks, uh, global corporations, even they get replaced. Even they are sometimes uh, withdrawn from the positions that they are in. Even they are made redundant and given golden handshakes. It's just a part of life. And even the most talented people, they... Um, have to switch organizations because they are placed into a kind of situation where they feel they need to switch because they are given that kind of a pressure or they're told that it's time that we give you a golden handshake because you're getting too expensive or certain things that you're doing isn't matching the expectation of the organization and it can very well happen because organizations are also comprised of people and people to people there can be differences of opinion. So these are things that you need to, I mean, those people who are facing these kind of situations, they need to tell themselves and they need to reprogram the whole mindset that uh, this is a big failure and it is a big shame. Um, very, very famous and talented people all around, people that you look up to have faced this kind of situation at least two or three times in their life and career. And probably they may face it one or two more times as well. So you just need to embrace all of these kind of problems, take it in your stride, not really be that much bothered about it. You need to take it easy. And the biggest thing is that you need to understand that life is really way beyond work, way beyond one's career, way beyond just waking up and um, you know going to work and paying one's bills and rolling over from one phase of life to the next. Life is a tremendous gift from God. It is a gift from the Creator. And you need to experience life. You need to really celebrate small little good things in life that come your way. You need to travel. You need to go and see nice things, experience nice places, wear good, nice clothes, eat some good food. You shouldn't be wasting money. I'm not saying that. But you need to treat yourself to good things in life as well, in moderate quantities. And you need to feel happy. You cannot allow troubles in life to weigh you down. You need to understand that no matter what happens, I need to keep smiling. I need to keep functioning. I need to remain happy. I need to move on. No matter how much dirt is coming my way, no matter how much um, garbage gets thrown my way, no matter how much of pressure gets dumped onto me, I need to go on surviving. So that is the kind of mindset that will help you to navigate 
through periods of long extended misfortune and it would also help you to combat situations where you go through setbacks in career. So these are just some of my thoughts that I thought I would like to share with everyone who could be listening to me within Bangladesh, outside Bangladesh. And with that, I want to welcome you to watch more episodes of my video blog series. And with that, I want to draw today's discussion to a close. And I invite everyone to, you know, share your thoughts and opinions below. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful. I hope there were quite a few things that I said which can incite active discussion. Thank you so much. I look forward to interacting with you again soon.